In this video we're going to talk about the channels area in the DMX workspace. The channels, which we covered a little bit in the intro video, you should definitely watch that, are right here in the lower left hand area of the DMX workspace and they're connected directly to the timeline program editor. So each channel has its own animatable, keyframable area right to the right of it. You can set keyframes with the, the dimmer control here. You can also repatch your channel. So if you've done some elaborate programming like I've done here on this flickering red light here, which we can kind of see if I move through it. Let me go to live here with the, the three key. Okay, now we're in live. By the way, the three key will always take you back to your live view, which is something very useful to know. So if I play this, you see I've got some flickering, a lot of action happening on this program. And let's say for some reason I needed to patch this to a different DMX channel, you can just click into the number area and patch in a different number. And now, you know, it would move over to whatever light you have plugged into that channel. So that's uh, how the repatching works. You can also reorder these so you can pick them up and move them around. They don't have to be in numerical order. Another important feature is the grouping. So let me show you how that's done. I'm going to turn off this red light by just hitting the all off button right there. So I've got this what's called main light. So there's that light and it's kind of behind my subject. And then I've got another light that's on channel four. Let me just hit the make new channel button and it pops up as four just because that's the numerical order. I'm going to write um, front in there and that's it full up. Now I could have main and front work together as one programmable channel. So this would save me the trouble like if they both had to dim up and dim down I wouldn't have to set keyframes on both of those. The first thing I'm gonna do is just clear out all my keyframes. You don't have to do this but that's how I'm gonna start. So with both the main and front I'm gonna shift click select those together I can click this icon that looks like a little chain link. That's going to make a group out of them. I can even add a color to the group, so I'm going to go ahead and just make it orange just for the heck of it. And now these two will work as one unit. So I could go to my first position and I can move the main dimmer here. Now you can see it's putting a key on both layers. If I turn this up, I don't have to look at the secondary grouped channel. In fact, there could be 20 underneath here. And this could be useful if you have a series of lights, you know, lighting maybe a big, you know, green screen or something, and you don't need to set them all. Or maybe you've got, you know, lights lighting a sky and they're all gonna dim together like a sunset or something. So instead of programming them all separately, you can group them, fold this up, and now both of these are working together like that. Another cool channel feature is the light filter. I'm going to turn off our main light and go back and turn on our red light. If you remember, the, this red one's got all this crazy dimming and flashing going on like that. Now it's all a bit bright. It's kind of fluctuating up and down, kind of comes up into the, like, what are some of these high values? Up into the 70s, high 70s, 80. If we wanted to ramp all of this slowly up and slowly down, like a flame flicker or something. We want to have control of it, like a, a flame slowly getting brighter, for instance. This would be difficult to do if we had to go in and change every one of these keyframe values. Now, there are tricks where you can select a bunch and, and then go to the lower area and you can sort of move them all up proportionally up and down. That's one way, but that's not going to give you an animatable slow ramp down. You'd have to kind of do it in sections. So we have this thing called a filter. I'm going to control click on the red side here. Um, it's called red side because it's being lit from the side. And I'm going to say add filter. Okay, and it even tells us filter for red side. And you'll notice that the slider is different than the other sliders. It's actually centered on zero, which means we can lower the value or we can increase the value. So let's say we wanted to start with a kind of a lower, you know, just a beginning of a flicker. Okay, so. I've now lowered all the values with this keyframe up here of the red side light. So now they're all low. And we can put another keyframe out here. Maybe it just comes up a little bit more. Something like this. And then another one out here. And here we'll, we'll go ahead and, and raise the value up more. And then we'll, just for fun, we'll take it back down. 
Okay. So let's see what happens here. Got a little bit of a flicker. The flicker gets brighter. It's getting brighter. And then dark. So we were able to put a nice fluctuation over this very complicated effect with just a few keyframes. And that way we didn't have to add a lot of work of going in and, and doing all these you know changes to every single keyframe of our red flicker. So that's how you use a filter in the DMX and a little bit about grouping and you can play with the grouping. You can also use filters on groups, so that's useful. So that wraps up this uh, little tutorial about channels in DMX. Thanks for watching.